Okay, welcome to uh, a brief demo on uh, version 4.3.2 of RC Crew Chief. Uh, I'm going to try and run through this really quickly, so let's see if I can do it in less than five minutes. Um, the biggest change you're going to see is on the setup page. Uh, you'll see now we have these charts that are listed on the right hand side. The suspension properties that most of you should be familiar with are still there. You just have to click on a different tab to see them. So what's going to happen now is as we make setup changes, you're going to see these bar graphs starting to appear. Um, what they represent is uh, the top graph is the uh, effect on your corner entry uh, mid and exit uh, grip and it's a relative comparison between the setup that's listed up here and um, the changes that you're making. So there is a button at the top here that goes through this in more detail. I'm not going to get buried in this in this uh, review. You guys can uh, uh, play around with it when we get the update and uh, see what you think. Uh, some changes are small and some changes are large, which is the nice feature here because it actually quantifies how much of a change you're making. You can see I made a setup change to uh, that's going to affect roll center and camber gain, and uh, it didn't have a huge impact. It has an impact, but it's not as big as other changes that you can make. Uh, the other thing you miss that you can do is you can uh, compare your setup to a different setup. So you can, if you want to compare two, two setups you have in your list, so we can just select a different one here in the list. So now we've got this basic carpet setup that's listed up here, and that's what the graphs are showing. Now the other thing you can do is you can just look at weight transfer effects in isolation or camber effects in isolation, so you can see how much each one is contributing to the setup change. Uh, you can narrow the chart range and widen it, and <laughs> you can also change the uh, uh, acceleration values that are using to calculate the weight transfer effects. Okay, so that's the setup one. There's no change in the damping tab, no change in the weight transfer tab, no change in the dynamics tab. Uh, there is a change in the acceleration tab, and the main change here is what I've uh, added is now you can look at the I squared R losses of the motor. Uh, so this is very helpful when you're trying to look at heating effects. If you're uh, doing a lot of uh, dyno testing or playing around with this feature, it can certainly help you out a lot. Um, I'm just going to turn on I'll calculate here. So if um, uh, you're making a change to pinions, you can see you know how much of an effect that's going to have on your your heat that your motor's generating. So what I just did there, uh, I went way down in gearing. You can see I've got much lower speed, uh, so taking a lot of the load off the motor. And yeah, there's a big difference. At uh, you know the bottom end of the acceleration curve, you're 51 watts different. So uh, that motor in that configuration probably wouldn't even get warm. Um, uh, the other end of that spectrum is if you start increasing your your uh, you know, pinion size, so lowering your gear ratio, uh, you're going to see the opposite effect. So now here we now are dissipating in 17 watts more, so it can make a significant difference. That would make a significant difference in the uh, motor temperature. Uh, the other thing I've added here is a little ball stud calculator. <laughs> so this is very helpful for those of you who like to make your own models. Uh, what it does is uh, most ball studs have a flat on the top of them. So if you just take, you know, from the flat and divide the ball stud diameter by two, you're going to get an error in the uh, dimension that you're going to be using. So this just allows you by having the taking the diameter of the ball stud, the width of the flat on the top of the ball stud. Uh, you can also include the height too. Um, it'll calculate what the uh, um, distance from the top of the ball, top of the ball stud, the flat on the ball stud, to the centroid of the uh, of the ball stud. Um, okay, next up uh, on the in the chassis manager, uh, I've made it a little bit easier for you to see what's going on when you're editing files. If you 
click on any of the points here, you'll see there's a red cross that appears. So that shows you which point you're actually editing. So it just makes life a little easier when you're uh, uh, adding or deleting or correcting points that you have in your uh, uh, your tables for your alternate positions. Um, and last but not least, we've got some changes to the motor manager. Uh, and it's primarily in the dyno analysis. So I'm just going to load some files in here and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, so I've just loaded a couple of dyno files in here. And this is a TSR 2.0175 motor. Uh, so the changes are in the um, dyno comparison section. So essentially what we've got here now is we have our versus RPM uh, graphs. So this takes your dyno data and uh, allows you to look at it in, you know, you look at torque, efficiency, current, and voltage. Uh, but what we have new now is I've just included the RPM versus time. So this is the actual spin up of the uh, flywheel dyno showing you RPM versus time. Uh, we can add in here current and we can add in voltage. So if we click on any point here, you can see what the difference in the RPM is, what the difference in your current draw is, and what your voltage being delivered to the uh, uh, ESC is. So that's another handy little feature. You want to compare different motors or you want to compare different timing settings, you can get a much uh, better feel for uh, exactly what's going on. So that is all I wanted to talk about here. I didn't quite make five minutes, six minutes and 40 some odd seconds. So I uh, hope you guys find this a uh, useful update. And uh, if you have any comments, particularly on the setup, new setup features, I'd uh, really like to hear them. Have a good one.